The analysis perspective allows users to start a new analysis with a previously generated spectral library using the library-based DIA analysis or without a library using the direct DIA workflow. Over here, you can open previously processed projects saved as spectrum of experimental files. In short, SME files. Setting up DIA analysis in Spectronaut is straightforward. Let's do it together. We'll upload DIA data for direct DIA analysis. Today, I will perform an analysis of mixed proteome samples containing human, yeast, and E. coli proteomes mixed at two different proportions. The dataset I'm using was acquired on a TeamStuff instrument, but you will notice that the data I have selected is saved in HDRMS format. We highly recommend transforming your DIA data to HDRMS format before starting the analysis, as it will make processing faster. HDRMS Converter is an app that facilitates DIA data transformation and is installed automatically with the Spectronaut package. Following the wizard, we will select the FASTA file that will be used to generate a search space for the direct search of DIA data. When analyzing multi-species samples, you can select one common FASTA file or separate FASTA files for each organism. When setting up a new analysis, you can select the default spectral settings, as these are recommended as optimal for the majority of DIA analysis projects. Today, we will talk about a few specific settings that you might want to select or change depending on your preferences and the specific characteristics of your project. Here, you can select your own settings schema, predefined in the settings perspective, or you can change the settings directly in the wizard. You will notice immediately that direct via settings consist of two parts, pulsar settings for the spectrum-centric search and DIA analysis for the peptide-centric data extraction and quantification. In the first part, you can select the type of enzyme used as the protease in each of experiments. Spectronaut also supports unspecific digestion and custom digestion rules predefined by the user in the database perspective. Here, you can also select the maximum and the minimum peptide length for the search, as well as the number of allowed miscleavages. This is particularly useful for unspecific digestion workflows, including peptidomics data, or searches with multiple variable modifications that create a bigger search space. In the labeling node, you can specify any peptide labels used in your experiment. And in the modification node, you can add any additional fixed or variable modifications you would like to include in your search. The identification section allows us to control reported IDs using FDR on the PSM, peptide, and protein group levels. Result filters determine which of the identified precursors and their corresponding fragments will be used for the peptide-centric part of the analysis. You can find a detailed description of each of the available settings in the software manual. Let us move on to the second part of the direct DIA settings. Here, you can select settings to define XIC extraction tolerances and to adjust the calibration process. Note that DIA analysis in Spectronaut does not require spiking in IRT peptides, but we highly recommend their presence for quality control purposes. In the identification settings, you can set up Q-value cutoffs at the protein and precursor levels. You can also exclude single hit proteins from the list of identified ones. In the quantification settings node, the user can specify various settings that determine which peptides will be used for protein level quantification and how this quantification will be executed. For example, here we can determine the way we will perform imputation of missing values. Note that by the default, the software is not performing any imputation. Secondly, you can select which peptides will be used for the quantification of protein groups based on the protein specificity. For example, you can select only prototypic peptides. By default, this filter is toggled off, meaning that any peptide associated with a given protein group might be used for its quantification. Below, the LFQ method that will be used for protein quantification is defined. For a typical smaller DIA experiment, Spectronaut will apply the max LFQ algorithm. When the experiment size exceeds 500 runs, the top-end strategy, Quant 2.0, will be applied. You can always change it to your preferred strategy independent of the experiment size. For Quant 
you can specify how many top N peptides will be actually used for protein level quantification. Further below, you can find settings related to the normalization applied within the software. Spectronaut performs cross-run normalization on the precursor level. By default, it will select random precursors from your samples. But you can choose precursors that belong to a given FASTA file or precursors that carry specific modification. The latter might be particularly useful in the case of PTM enrichment analysis. For projects focused on PTM identification and localization, the PTM workflow should be enabled here. This workflow offers PTM set level analysis with specific PTM set level visualizations and reporting. You can learn more about this workflow by watching our dedicated PTM video tutorial. Post analysis settings allow us to choose which statistical test is used for the differential abundance analysis. You can select a paired or unpaired t test depending on the relationship of subjects belonging to the experimental conditions. Additionally, here you can indicate your preference on performing differential abundance analysis on the protein group or on the peptide level. The settings already contain default cutoffs that define the list of statistical test analysis candidates. Those cutoff values are among other settings that can easily be updated once the analysis is finished. In the condition setup, you can define which runs correspond to a particular experimental condition. By selecting a reference condition, we can define the numerator and denominator for the protein fault change calculation. On the next wizard page, you can select geo annotations to further annotate your data. Spectronaut will not only perform differential abundance analysis on the protein group level, but also geotherm enrichment analysis, showing which geotherms in the candidates list are overrepresented compared to the identified proton background. Finally, you will be able to add extension runs, which will be used for generation of the search space in Pulsar. Here, you can upload raw DIA or DDA runs, including files acquired after sample fractionation or acquired with different LC gradients. If you have already processed DIA or DDA data of the same sample type using Pulsar, you can use search archives of those searches instead of the raw files. This helps to reduce additional analysis time. The last page shows an overview of the whole experiment setup. Clicking Finish will start processing your data. Once the analysis in Spectronaut is finished, you can review the results of the analysis in the form of multiple graphs dedicated to run, protein group, and precursor levels. There is plenty of information to explore.